so we've recently got uh, some changes to our, not changes, but more updates. solidification to our brand guideline updates. Okay. Updates. Sorry. Updates to our brand guidelines. Um, our brand guidelines are a, uh, not to get uh, controversial here, but they're a living document. They are ever changing. Why is it? Con I was making a joke. I was making a constitution joke. There's people who believe the constitution oh. is a living, breathing document that is always changing like our brand do guidelines. And there's people that think that our constitution is not a living, breathing document and that it is literally... I do not want changes. to get into that conversation. We do not need to get in that conversation, <laughs> but uh, sorry, that was my subtle sense of humor. Um, our, our brand guidelines are a living, breathing, yeah. ever-changing document. But, yeah. that's, but again, that's the term guidelines yeah they're they're guidelines yeah it's not chorby's constitution it's chorby's guidelines <laughs> look i did it again <laughs> i know i kind of like you almost baited me i kind of wanted to go in a little bit further <laughs> i like it well the guidelines new are new challenge accepted bait ben i'm kidding you'll get me eventually i'm not superman but i try to be uh so the guidelines have adjusted they've been updated excuse me um, and there's also starting to be a shift in the, the strategy of our marketing, um, more so than anything, the content that we're creating and uh, how we're marketing it, maybe not necessarily changing a whole lot. Um, but we have some uh, new team members that are coming on board um, and a new de a development uh, in a strategy of marketing. We're really an entirely new, de we're establishing a department. Yes, because up to this point we've been... Um, Contracting out, we're establishing with agency. We're establishing and rethinking a department that is development, and under that develop under that and communications. Yeah, development and communications, and under that is marketing. our strategy on marketing, mm -hmm. tied into media, and of course that also has to tie into education to our team and training and development in our team well much like the de the department of development and communications is involved in in all areas of administration in all areas of operation in some regard mm -hmm. so is marketing that's why marketing is existing in yes. there because the, it ties into um what we market and the uh, what we're selling to our leads and to our customers that, that customer has to experience that when they call, when a technician steps on the yard. So there has to be an integration between all of these different um, yep. divisions, departments, um, so that we're effectively communicating what someone is going to actually experience in yep. some way, shape, or form. Yeah. But yeah. But we're establishing that. That, right. that for the last two and a half years has literally been you. That the department the, we're building or that we're yep. building out of. We called it Department of Education for the last two and a half years. It was one person, because that's all we had the resources for. <laughs> and then most everything else was outsourced, and marketing was really totally separate, and it's yep. been outsourced. The Chorby brand as a whole, uh, we have outsourced the marketing mm -hmm. for actually a long time, but especially the last two years. Mm -hmm. We've we've had that all that outsourced. And we now see a... Uh, we see more clearly that our future, though it's in the short term, is going to make things more challenging. In the long term, our future needs to be in-house marketing team mm -hmm. members. Uh, not all in-house, but a lot of in-house people that are n mostly and solely devoted to yeah. the Chorby brand. We, we want an in-house team that's going to take ownership and drive, but but internally yeah. uh, be the ones that are the decision makers, not outsourcing that externally. Yeah. Uh, you've heard me use this analogy. To me, the difference is is uh, an outsource. You can get a lot of talent, a lot of talent through outsourced mm -hmm. marketing using small agencies, big agencies, a mixture of the two, independent people, uh, you name it. You can get a lot of talent that way. But what you lose, or what you get, what I believe you can gain when you're dealing with W two and, and team members that are solely focused. This is a very, marketing is extremely creative. It's not a science, it's an mm -hmm. art. And you need artistic, you need critical thinking and artistic thinking. And you need, you want people that are literally going to bed mm -hmm. thinking, thinking about, about marketing, mm -hmm. passionate about marketing, but specifically the Chorby brand. Yeah. You want people waking up thinking about it. You want people, whether in the shower, wherever their creative time. And that's harder to do when you're dealing with an agency that's got 10 clients. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, I absolutely agree with the thought process behind that. Um, I also think that having more control internally mm-hmm. allows us to produce um, at scale. Yeah, it is. Gonna I'm not saying that's scale. not doable no, no, externally. It's absolutely going to allow us to scale. But I think it makes a lot more sense to actually do that yeah. in house. So that that I am excited about. I'm excited about um, having both a, a marketing professional or someone who is aspiring to be a marketing professional um, and having a media team to collaborate. How would you differentiate the two? Of a professional and an aspiring professional? Well, no. Marketing. Yeah. And media. Yeah, so. How would you differentiate? What, what I, the way I've been framing this recently, um, number one, I want to preface by saying I'm not a marketing professional, but I do believe that there are some core elements to what makes a successful marketer. Um, a big part of that is personality that translates well uh, digitally and print and, and, and omni channels. A personality, uh, specifically for us, one that aligns with our values, understands our brand, and lives our brand, and can um, coordinate and facilitate content that coincides with that. So, the personality of a person in this position of a marketing and brand manager has to be someone that lives and breathes the Chorby life lifestyle, the Chorby way. Um, they also have to have a skill and experience to effectively market that, to put a plan in place, um, to implement that content, uh, manage it, and track its effectiveness, its engagement, and experience enough to know this is working or this is not working and how to course correct. Um, so... I, We've talked before, in a lot of ways, marketing is sticking your finger in the air and guessing. Finger in the wind. Finger in the wind uh, and guessing. It's a lot of testing. um, But we need someone with experience that knows whether something is working or not working. It's okay to test. You have to test. You have to try so many different things. And But to be able to evaluate, this is uh, helping us achieve our objective of gaining awareness and building our branding. Um, it is also gaining um, leads, and our sales teams is taking over those leads and converting them to clients, and then our customer service team is taking care of those clients, and then our operational team members are taking care of the services on the, you know, in the house. Um, so to go back to your question earlier, uh, I think a, a marketing individual is going to lead the direction of what kind of content that we need to create. Our media team is going to be focused on actually getting that. It's capturing it. So having a producer who's going to be um, part project manager, part developer, to source and find those content creators to go out and actually capture those things. Uh, And as that media producer also will facilitate the organization and storage of all that content to then translate, getting it over to that marketing individual um, and then same thing, I want, would want that, do want that producer to also collaborate very heavily with that marketer, marketing professional, um, to have a, a say in uh, what needs to be captured and how mm-hmm. it gets captured. Um, so it is a very collaborative environment that needs to be in place between those two uh, areas of marketing and media. Yeah. And we have pretty much, in my mind, if executed properly, we have pretty much endless amounts of work and opportunity, oh, yeah. both from a media standpoint and a marketing standpoint. Yeah, I mean, especially because you three have three times the team we we have the resources have right now. to. Yeah, yeah. especially for uh, individuals who live in the thirty thousand foot view of I see this and I want to try this, and then you communicate that to the people who need to get it done, and they go and do it, but. For us specifically, for you specifically, and I would say for myself too, when I go to bed, I think about Jorby. When I wake up, I think about yeah. Jorby. And there's, I have a lot of ideas that I write down in here, and uh, I want to actually Execute. realize these. Right. I want them to come to life. And so there certainly is a lot of work to do. So we just need the team in place to get it done, which is what we're doing right now. We're in the process of hiring uh, thank the Lord, Brent's here. We have the media producer, but we've got more people we've got to find. Yep. So we have a content creator position that we're looking to fill, and we have that marketing and brand manager position to fill. Um, 
And then a training coordinator to kind of go along with that. A little different, but still within that communications and development department. Yeah. It's driving the, um, being the driving uh, voice inside of our culture. Um, But also, yeah, to your point, the training coordinator also has to understand uh, what is going on with our marketing and media um, because a lot of that content can and should yes. and will be used internally That's, for training. And to me, I, I could be wrong, but I don't think that most businesses have things structured in an efficient way with those two things being as, as combined as they are for us, is what we're planning to do. Though. Yeah, hard to say. I, I, it's hard to say, but I've never, I've never seen or heard of a business in any industry whose marketing division is under the same department that education and training is yeah. is, and I think that there is really something to that, tying those two things together. Yeah. To the same point you just said, because a lot of the same content that you create for marketing mm-hmm. can be utilized for internal training, and a lot of the internal training that you that you use, a lot of the media that may be and in, in the in the production that may happen for internal training can be turned around and used for mm-hmm. marketing. Yeah. Well, I think it, uh, this is a stretch, but I think it, it does go in line with um, our approach to having uh, team members be a part of the media, too. Um, we have uh, specifically our uh, director of agronomy, Jeremy Lowe, not only just has natural gifting, he also works at it uh, on being an effective communicator, but mm-hmm. doing it in front of a camera, that's a whole other story, and it's yeah. hard. Um, but he's really good at it, and I think he likes to do it, mm-hmm. and I think he wants to do more of it. Um, but we want to facilitate that more amongst all of our team members. The yeah. more people on our team that we can put on camera, in my opinion, the better. Yeah. Period. Uh, the right people, but yes. When you say the right people, though. People that understand our brand. Yeah. Yeah. I'm saying that if we have a but team again, of brand. the more people yeah. at our company... I see what you're saying. People yes. yeah, yeah. we can get on camera, be yeah. willing to get on camera. Even the ones that aren't as good the first time, they'll get really good sure. really fast, yeah. or at least in my experience, that's very possible. Yeah. Um, the more people we can have on camera, it's the more we grab that glimpse and it is forever put into the digital world. And you you can gain media ten years down the road off of that piece that happened in Yeah, oh for sure. Yeah. The, it, yeah. That is an under, in my opinion, an underutilized um, concept is recycling content, yes. repurposing and content. the scalability of content. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, again, I think that our training coordinator will help facilitate that engagement uh, in many ways, not in every way, but in many ways. The uh, hands and feet of that is going to be our um, production leaders. Yes. Exactly. It's the production leaders who are going to be uh, leading by example, but also um, fostering that engagement with their teams. Yeah. So if we capture the hearts and minds. That's why we need that high bar for talent as far as our core principles, what we were talking about <laughs> a little while ago. We've got yeah. to have a high bar for talent because yeah. we've got to have people, like you're talking about our director of agronomy, uh, they've got to, you know, our director of agronomy, he has to be passionate about agronomy, <laughs> plants, and all things living, soil science. soil science. But then he also has to be willing and able to grow and get better at being on camera like you're talking about. He has to be willing and able to teach. Mm-hmm. And he's not the only one. That's really kind right. of the expectation yeah. of our overall leadership culture. I'm going to ask you a question that I think other people would probably ask you. Do you think that we're asking too much of someone to no. do both? Not right. even close. Well, uh, uh, no. And by so, that, what I mean is uh, having someone whose full-time job is to manage team members and to manage a customer experience and production, and on top of that, have them be on camera. Well, so it depends. It depends on uh, our current setup and structure. Of course, last time we actually met here, we talked about our organizational chart and our structure. The way the support we're providing those production leaders mm-hmm. with that support, no. Yeah. If I expected our director of agronomy, for example, Jeremy Lowe, to produce the media mm-hmm. as opposed to just yeah. be available, yeah. produce the media, come up with it, produce it, and then launch it, 
yeah. cast it, whatever whatever that means, yeah. on whatever platform we're going on, and do his day job, mm-hmm. which the example you just gave is client experience, uh, uh, and you mentioned a few other things. But for example, you talk about client experience. Mm-hmm. If we expected him to do all those things, and then also manage and develop and lead the yeah. client experience, but it's not just him that does that. He's we've got we've got uh, uh, Jen Spencer lead mm-hmm. client care. Mm-hmm. We've got a team even below that, that works with her that are lead CCAs, mm-hmm. you know. And so, so the depth of our leadership matters, and but that's why we've we've invested in that leadership. Mm-hmm. Um, so whether it's Jen Spencer or whether it's our lead CCAs and Jody and Katie, um, and, and 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 they're supporting the client experience on Jeremy Lowe's side. But then you've also got the executive leadership in Cynthia and yourself, uh, in, in, in Michaela in supporting the development Mm -hmm. of whether it's Jeremy Lowe, our director of agronomy and all the things he's working on or our other production leaders, Mm -hmm. there's an enormous amount of support. And that's a big part of our culture and environment. It's expensive, but in order to actually execute at Mm -hmm. the scale we're talking about, we have to, we have to do that. I'm glad you said that. That's kind of the point I was hoping that you would get at. Um, Because I, I don't think that we're asking too much either because the legwork is done being done for them. In my opinion, they have the better end of the deal because they get to talk about what they're passionate about and make a positive impact both in their team members' yeah. lives but in our customers' lives. And again, yeah. ultimately coming back around to that customer experience, mm-hmm. being optimal, being great. So I think it's a great uh, thing for them. And you mentioned support. It's top, top of mind for me right now because I'm in the process of doing a lot of interviews and you know, at the end of my interviews, I always ask, what questions can I answer for you? And a vast majority of the time, I'm getting asked, what's the culture like? Um, I can't tell you how many people have said, I'm uh, what I'm mainly concerned about and anywhere I go is the culture. They don't talk about pay, they talk about culture. That's what they're looking for. And it gets me excited to share that, that our culture is hungry. The people that, are, that make up this company, Chorby, we're hungry. We're passionate about what we do. So it, it lends itself to being a very fast-paced environment. We have a lot of ambitious goals that are on the horizon, a lot of waves that we want to make. That doesn't happen from being stagnant. It happens from actively pursuing every single day with some time to celebrate, but then we get back after it. And so it is a fast-paced environment, and we want people on our team that are committed to that, to making it waves and a positive impact, innovating. But that's not worth it my opinion if we don't have a team that's supportive yeah so the team and all and when i say team i mean everybody it's not just our executive team it is all of our production leaders it's all of our individual contributors are focused on helping the person next to them that's part of what's going to make this successful is that level of support to your point it's expensive but i really think that if you don't have that level of support you're not going to have people committed right it's the people that make the difference. And so it's exciting to me knowing what I know of working in other corporate cultures. The culture that we have, I think, is conducive to a very successful environment. It's challenging. It's really hard. It can be really hard at times. Yep. But the team and the people are what make the difference yep. in the long-term health of this company. And when I think about culture, like our guidelines... Oh yeah, I forgot we're talking about that. (laughs) We're we're talking. We're just talking. Uh, But like our guidelines, our culture is is not. It can't be stagnant. Yeah. Every single new team member builds and adds to the Mm -hmm. culture. Uh, Every new role that we create builds and adds to the culture, either positively or negatively. Yeah. But it's always changing, just like the guidelines. Mm -hmm. They're guidelines. They're they're changing. They're evolving. Our culture is always changing. I don't believe we've always had a hungry culture. I think that's something that has begun to shift in the last 12 to 18 months because we've talked about it. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I don't believe we've... I think that was an area where we got got a little uh, complacent uh, in some ways. Yeah. I think we went... No, I wasn't here during this time, but from what you told me, went from being very ambitious, super hungry to only about getting it done, getting it done, getting it done, no excuses, getting it done, to pushing it too far to the edge to let's 
let's focus on making a happy environment and then we started to scale back a little bit on those that ambition yeah. and that desire to push and innovate and i think we're now get certainly from my experience getting into a very good mixture of those two things yeah. of pushing ourselves hard because for me my job i get value out of doing my job uh for me it translates well because i uh, to the like organization because i care about doing it for the people around me um, but I want to innovate because I want to prove to myself what I can do. And I think Chorby benefits from that and our people around me benefit from that drive and ambition. Um, and I think we have a lot of people that are like that. It's not Maybe. just about I'm doing this job so that Chorby can benefit from it and I'll get a paycheck. It's way beyond that. We have a lot of buy-in. Yeah. And that's something we've done a decent job at. But again, the key in that. And that's, again, where I think early on, um, you know, we had buy-in when we became Chorby in 2019. We had buy-in. We had a lot of excitement. But we didn't have that hunger mm-hmm. as much so. We had a lot of people yeah. spinning their wheels probably. Every, people have always worked hard here. We've always had a culture that you work, people work their ass yeah. off. But we didn't have effective. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were not executing fully and I think we had a lot of complacency in the sense that, that people thinking that if we just work hard we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna execute successfully and we're gonna achieve the goals we're getting and that's not true yeah you can't just work hard you have to work on the right things you you, you can't just put the time in yeah you have to put the right time in you have to put the right time on the right mm-hmm. things and that is a challenge in itself yeah yeah, that's a good point. It reminds me of uh, ability and capability. You might have the willingness and, and ability to do certain things, but are you truly capable of doing that at scale? Yeah. Are yeah. you capable of doing it consistently and uh, focusing on the right things to actually uh-huh. achieve that objective? Right. Which is hard to do. It's it's difficult. But well, it's ever changing too. So that yeah. makes it even. It's a moving. You're dealing with a moving target. I love moving targets. They're super fun. Uh, so our brand guidelines, one thing I would point out, uh, that is a consistent theme, uh, are the, the hexagons, the hive, yeah, the hive, um, um, theming of here. Um, it's good because it, in my opinion, it breaks things up a little bit. Um, actually it goes into depth somewhere. Oh, well, we can circle back around to it, but the hive, it breaks things up. Um, it allows for us to be more dynamic with, um, and intentional with, Anything that we're posting that we're talking about, um, the hive is interchangeable. Yep. And I love that aspect of it. So our mission has not changed to conveniently add value and comfort to your property. It's about the oldest consistency thing, consistent thing at this company, other than Josh and I. <laughs> In all seriousness, yeah. Uh, I think you've heard me tell this story a little bit, but uh, that mission statement: we were Emerald Lawn Care in twenty. 20- 13 so the, the we we hit a million dollars in revenue for the first time in 2012 at any organization i was anything a part of josh and i uh, second year josh and i were together and what is today chorby was emerald lawn care did a million dollars in 2012 i hired at the end of 2012 i went to actually we were just talking about earlier i went to gie green industry mm-hmm. expo mm-hmm. in louisville kentucky uh got inspired by a management consultant who gave a keynote there about I don't even remember what it was about, and that was my first interaction with hiring a consultant, a management consultant, and I paid this guy. I think he I hired him for like twenty six hundred dollars a month. At the time I thought it was a small fortune, but I thought, let's see if this is the secret thing, <laughs> the secret thing that explodes that makes everything blow up. Um, but he had us start working on a mission statement. Mm-hmm. He did two things. One, he made us start working on a mission statement. Two, he made us do something that I have made people do since, and everybody absolutely hates it, but it does work, um, and that is to split up our day into increments of 15 mm-hmm. minutes and to mm-hmm. write down what we spend fifteen every 15 minutes to basically clock your time. Mm-hmm. Now, this is why we ended up firing that consultant, because that was not a weakness of ours. It's a weakness of most entrepreneurs. Yeah. But Josh and I both were always pretty darn good at our time management and how yeah. we prioritize. So we kind of looked at this and were like, we do this naturally. We don't need yeah. we don't need this. But they built this mission statement, and basically this mission statement has stayed unchanged. Mm-hmm. It's changed a little bit, but the 
key concept of conveniently add value and comfort to your property has stayed. Mm -hmm. And it was almost like a prophecy because at that time we were Emerald Lawn Care and really in a lot of ways we were still wandering around as a business trying to figure out what do we actually want out of business other than to make money. Mm -hmm. We were still wandering around trying to figure that. We create this this mission statement to conveniently add value and comfort to your property, but we're a lawn mowing business. Mm -hmm. There's nothing about lawn mowing in our mission statement. And, and even back then, I remember not liking the mission statement because we couldn't actually accomplish it as a mowing business. Mm -hmm. It was so much bigger than that, but I yeah. didn't, I didn't, I didn't see it. Yeah. So interestingly, we've gone through, we're on our third name, but are still the same <laughs> mission statement. Emerald Lawn, we extinguishers, and then Troy B. Yeah, and we maintained that mission statement in one in one capacity or another. Yeah, I love it. Well, it does encapsulate. Um, Capsulates the values of the company. Convenience. Right. Sorry, I'm talking over you, but it, but how dare you? Convenience. Uh, it it ca encapsulates the so the values of the company, the culture of the company. We want to do it. Uh, we want to be about convenience. Mm -hmm. We obviously are interested in your property, your property maintenance, excellence in property maintenance. Mm -hmm. uh, I love a beautiful yard, for example. Um, but no, it, it encapsulates our culture today. Maybe it didn't in 2013, mm -hmm. though, when we created it, not necessarily. The other when one, we created it, we were just mowing yards. The other one, too, that is trust as part of our values and the comfort aspect of that. When you call Torby, you can trust us. Um, yeah, giving yeah. you a comfortable experience, I exactly. guess is a better way to put that. Convenience, comfort, value. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's it's timeless. Exactly. It, we can do anything with it. Um, and that that's exactly. not to say we have a lack of direction, but uh, what it does say is that... You're exactly right. That it's just like the creation of Chorby in 2019. So this was 2013. The creation mm -hmm. of Chorby in 2019, the reason we came, we, we had to come up with a name that was a timeless mm -hmm. and that we can do absolutely anything with. Yeah. That was actually the requirement of Mr. Josh Cahill, my co-founder. Very, very was smart. It had to be a name. Actually, this is his words and I quote, it has to be a name that my business partner will not have to change no matter <laughs> what he decides to go and do. <laughs> that was his criteria. And he yeah, is the, was a wise he is the father of, of the name itself. He, he gets yeah. credit for that. Well, I got, I helped. I did the mission statement, though. <laughs> go ahead and put that one out there. Yeah. Uh, Trademarked by EJ. No. Yeah. Our promise, mutually beneficial outcomes are paramount to who we are. Uh, we believe so deeply in the services we provide that our family will always make it right with your family. Um, yeah. I mean, doing the right thing, even when it's not convenient. Um, we're, we're centered around making sure that our customers' experience is of the highest quality that we can provide. Yeah. Um, and that comes down to our team members and how we take care of well of them. Um, yeah, our tagline, your chores, our passion. Well, and our promise real quick, mutually, yeah. I'll just say this and we'll move on it. Uh, mutually beneficial outcomes. I'm a, I'm a big believer and I recently read a book. I don't even remember the name of the book. I told you about it. It's, talks about, it's talking about negotiation. That's mm. what it's called. Uh, something about no. Basically, the, art of, saying the no. art of saying no or something like that. Some, some, I can't remember the exact name of the book, but the art of saying no, something like that. Yeah. Basically, what it talks about is its principle is if there if if in deal making, mm -hmm. uh, if there's if if basically what it's saying is somebody's not getting screwed. It's not a good enough deal. <laughs> and I, I it's an older book, clearly an older book. Mm -hmm. Frankly, I think it's a bullshit concept and it's the reason that people have bad tastes on yeah. business and capitalism if, if if not everybody's benefit if 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 you have mutually beneficial outcomes somebody there's it's, it's a crappy deal is really the concept yeah. of the book I, I, I learned something from the book i wouldn't say the whole book was yeah. bs i learned a lot from the book i learned how other people might think and that i might be the schmuck on the other side of the table <laughs> if i'm not careful yeah. but at the same time, I don't believe in the concept of that. I believe that I believe that in in a modern, highly evolved capitalistic system, there can be almost always mutually beneficial mm -hmm. outcomes. I don't believe that that was always the case. 
go back 120 years, people were still trying to figure out how to, even in, even in, even in capitalist societies, people were still trying to figure out how to you know, feed their family and hope to keep a roof over their right. head. It was a little right. more cutthroat. Right. But to me, technology and the blessings that technology provides in all aspects of what that means allows for mutually beneficial outcomes in, in most industries, any industry that we have anything to do with, yeah. for sure. Well, I think um, the positioning of this, what it does communicate to our, uh, to our leads and to our clients um, is that we're for them. We're for offering. It's, it's authenticity and it's transparency, yes. and it positions us in a way that we can, uh, when we talk about our mission, people can believe that. Right, right. Um, and you mentioned our clients. There's our clients. And in most anything with regards to our promise and mutually, there's really... Correct me if I might be wrong here if I'm missing one, but I, I envision there's, there's really three parties in the deal. There's your team members, mm-hmm. people that are that have buy-in into the, the vision of the company, the mission of the company, the promise of the company. There's there's team members, but maybe they don't have they're not equity stakeholders. Mm-hmm. You've got equity stakeholders, owners, and you've got clients. To me, those are the three key. And those team members can be anything from the lawyer that you pay all the way to the most entry-level W-2 position. Those are the team members. Mm-hmm. But I believe there should be mutually beneficial outcomes in all, yeah. uh, with all parties. Yeah. Am I missing a party that you can think of? I don't think so. I, don't, I can't it's think of anything. But I think you're capturing all of those uh, different areas of how we're going to impact someone in yeah. some way, shape, or form. Um, yeah, I don't know if I have anything else to say on that. Uh, aside from, I think it makes us, um, not makes, uh, that's not the point I'm trying to get across is, I think people will want to relate to us yeah. because of that promise and because of our mission. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then our tagline, as you mentioned a second ago, your chores are passion. You got to give my business partner the credit for that one. He also, He's in, in addition of, to the name, he gets, he gets a lot of points on this stuff, <laughs> on, on a lot of stuff for that matter. Uh, our tagline, your chores are passion. About a month after we had determined the name Chorby. Mm-hmm. So this is a lot newer. Your chores are passion. About a month after we had come up with the name, we're gonna we're gonna brand the new company Chorby. Mm-hmm. Josh, we were on a call. And he really liked this tagline, and I, at the moment he said it, I thought that dead on. I agree completely. I you know conveniently adding value and comfort to your properties. It's too long to be able to put underneath your logo. Or, right. We tried it. It didn't really work. Uh, your chores, our passion takes that mission statement and really ties it together in what four words. Mm-hmm. I like it. I also always make it a joke. I, I really helped deal with the mission statement, which is a little more long winded. And my business partner, who's not as long winded as me, a little more short and to the point, mm-hmm. he came up with the four word. I just had a thought. Um, Brent, take notes. Uh, I think that as we start to um, create media, that is around the services that we provide, it needs to be more honed in on that. Your chores are passion. Our passion. And I think that's it needs to come our, across a little bit more um, definitively. That's our lifestyle brand. Yeah. Your chores, I mean, or that's a big key, that's a tagline to our lifestyle brand yeah. as a whole. Your chores are our passion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have a vision of how my in my head of how that's the thing. I I know Chorby can become. I don't know the exact details on how it would become a lifestyle brand, but it's not. And we struggle with this in our media. Yeah, we struggle getting engagement, but that doesn't really make sense. I mean, it does, but it doesn't. When you think about people as a whole, our culture, our our clients. People are passionate about their home mm-hmm. and their house. They are, mm-hmm. right? They're very passionate. So why do we not, you know, they're not directly passionate about lawn mowing, at least not most people. And they're not directly passionate about housekeeping or handyman services. Right. But people are generally very passionate about what, about the lifestyle brand and what we want to get across mm-hmm. in the sense of having an, a, a home that is that is excellent, uh, you can have a modest home, but be very, very. It, but it's 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 clean. Yeah. It's it's, it's uh, my dad's the best example. My dad lives in the same house I grew up in. Uh, it's what you would probably call a starter home, or at least it started out that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's it's a starter home or so. 
um, you know, typical three, four bedroom, two bath, two car garage in a suburb of Dallas. Mm -hmm. Uh, And, uh, but at the same time, I learned this. I learned this from him. Uh, He was a, he's a retired fireman, but his house, it's just a little quarter acre Mm -hmm. lot, but every square foot of his property is excellence. It's like a five star resort. And I believe he's not the only one. My him and my stepmom mm-hmm. taught me that because they were passionate about that. My stepmom was passionate about interior design and loved the Southwest concept. Not so much my style, but but the point is, mm-hmm. is people are passionate about the decoration of their home. People mm-hmm. are constantly spending. You know, think about some big Hobby Lobby, Home Depot, Lowe's, mm-hmm. th- these types of things. Chorby can have a place there in, mm-hmm. in building a lifestyle brand and teaching people the convenience of maintaining. A beautiful property. Mm-hmm. Does that make mm-hmm. sense? It makes sense. I still haven't quite yeah. figured out how to tie that lifestyle brand in, but yeah. there's something to that. You know, it traditionally, not traditionally, but recently in my mind has been about when we talk about the lifestyle branding of, of Chorby, the Chorby way, it's about excellence. Um, and so, at the, the practical side of things, when we talk about creating the content, in my mind, that's what it was about, it was showing the people that care about creating excellent things and the, that journey and that process and what are the, the, the mannerisms and things mm-hmm. that they do. Um, and we have a lot of that, a, a lot of people that are being showcased in their passions um, and what it translates to is excellence. And so, but outside of that, I haven't really figured out the secret of how we're going to get all this engagement and get a hundred thousand and beyond subscribers and, and all that good stuff. Well, you better figure it out. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. Well, we start somewhere. We're do and that then together, we, and, and we then start we somewhere. Exactly. Make adjustments, and then we keep going. Exactly. So I'm excited about it. I'm hungry. I'm hungry to get 500,000 subscribers. Enough of this 100,000. A million. Seven figures. Yeah, we'll get to that point. Maybe. No, we will. I just want to see what he would do when I said maybe. maybe. We might get there. It's like, it's like the word try. <laughs> I hate that word. What is that Yoda quote? Try or do, try, do or do, do or do not. There is no try. Yeah, or, isn't that on Jeremy Langlitz's? Uh, well, then there's no. There's another one. There's uh, try or do. Either no, that's not it either. I just told you the quote. Is that it? It's do or do not. Wait. No, there's one that essentially says Yoda has one. I just this listened is... to it just for the other day or read it, but there's basically one that says. Try or don't try. Either way, you're. No, that's not it. This is where we're going to spend the whole podcast. I'm just yeah. uh, trying to figure this one out. Go to the course. next slide. We're moving on. I can't uh, remember. Oh, look at that guy. We, we got to change this uh, new picture. This picture, yes, a new yes, picture. He, yeah. he, Brent knows. Um, Brent knows. I, I do want to. Even though I was a lot thinner in that picture than any picture recent, any new picture will be. Brand positioning. Uh. Yeah, our principles. This was important. I just wanted to cap. We we already talked about most of this. So I just want to make it apparent that this is a part of officially a part of our brand guideline, is um, to be focused on trust, quality, reliability, and uh, convenience. Um, and so I think that the, the you know something I hate about these. I like threes, and there's four here. I <laughs> we could get rid of quality. You have trust, reliability, and or or reliability. Trust, quality, and convenience. You get reliability in those. You're three. gonna take. You're gonna take one of those away. No, not necessarily. I'm just saying if we were going to. Well, it's a living we document. Were going, so. It is a living document, exactly. Wait, say it again. You would take your take away which one? I'd probably take uh, now reliability. Reliability, because frankly, trust, quality, and convenience. You get reliability out of all three of those. Hmm. It, yeah. it, no, you're you know right. what I mean. Yeah, I know what you're you saying. You say convenience. Yeah. Convenience exudes reliability. Quality mm-hmm. exudes reliability. Trust exudes reliability. Mm-hmm. Just a thought. Just happened well, to think of it just now as we pulled that slide up. Nothing that needs to be. No, no action needs to be created out of it unless we'll you see. completely agree. We're gonna. I have a feeling we're gonna change that. I think some of that has been changed, like on our website. It has. I think there's it a used piece. to be three. It used no, it used to be four. I thought, and it's become three. The opposite. 
It used to be three. This it used why, to be three. It's now four. This is why we need a marketing and brand manager who can <laughs> tell us exactly. It used to be three, and it is now these four. And to Kobe's credit, he would know. <laughs> <laughs> True. I'm telling you right now. It used to be three. It is now four because I'm not sure in my orientation right. uh, that if her new accounts representatives, uh, it... Uh, I think that I used to have three things that I would go over, and it was our three no, uh, principles. I'm going to Chorby.com right now. Even the oh yep yeah, yep yeah, yep yeah, yep yeah, yep. Yeah. Look, hold on. Which one did I say take out? Go back to that. Let's say take reliability out. Oh, I got it right. Look, trust quality convenience. I told you. Yeah, it used to be four. We took it down to three. That's what's always been on there. I know. Oh, it oh used the new to be website. Four. No, I'm saying the new website is back to four. Is four. Oh, we're gonna have to change it. See that little yeah, three. Yeah, that's what I'm used to, to yeah. sharing. Yeah, that we need to make that change to this. Now that I'm seeing this, what might be the case, but we'll deal with that later. <laughs> we might edit all that out. Why? Why would we edit all that out? Because I was right and you were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> our brand values. The soul. The soul of our branding being knowledgeable, wise, passionate, empathetic, um, and the personality. <clears throat> I don't know how much I want to go into these at the moment. I, I think um, I think we talked about them, and there's like yeah. about 75 slides. We'll be here for five hours if yeah. we go through I don't them. want to go through all of them. I, what I did want to go through, I don't want to go through all this stuff. Oh, I did want to go through these things. Um, again, with the, the hexagons, with the hive, um, it, it allows so much more modularity to, is that the right word? I love, I, I, I think it's a word. I'll it's take a, it. Modularity. It does. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very plug and play. Yeah. And I love that. Yeah. Um, about our concept. I think this is an example of some things we have, we are, I, I think we are, and there's a lot of examples, but we are, we're on track with this. Yes. And yeah. I keep telling, you know, you look at our brand, Jeremy Langlitz kind of established a lot of these items and these things alongside Gino Overstreet, our graphic designer. Kobe took these and I think built upon them, going back to mm -hmm. that living document that didn't built upon it. Now what's funny is I'll tell Jeremy Langlitz that and he'll kind of make a little smirk because you know he's an artist and no artist actually likes to like somebody to take their stuff and rework it. So in Jeremy's mind, every bit of this has just been completely changed from its original. But in my mind, I look at it and I think it's just been built upon. Yeah, it's I don't mean to offend Jeremy, but I, I really like the direction that we're going with this. I like I like the direction. Um, and again, that's why I say I don't need to offend. I think Jeremy established it, mm -hmm. the foundation for yeah. it, and Kobe just built upon it. It's just funny yep. to listen to the art. Again, I laugh at him when he do It's funny to, to, to listen to the artist in Jeremy because yeah. no artist, you know, any artist that's had their art just tweaked a little bit is going to look at it and be like, it's been butchered. It's <laughs> completely different. And I don't think that's the case at all. Yeah, no. Well, um, I like that, uh, you know, as we create content, we can include these icons. What is the, the terminology I learned recently? Iconography. Iconography. That's um, a thing. No yeah, doubt. I didn't realize it was a thing, but that's something that we can maneuver, um, maneuver around. Um, don't need to look at the colors. What I wanted to get to were these graphics. Um, this I'm actually excited about the the grain level of granularity that we can maneuver through with these different shades with the color coordination. Um, I like that it, it becomes um, to the point. It comes to the point where um, when you see the color, you know what surface, and I think we can build upon that uh, much further in the future. How exactly? We've got to make sure we don't change the colors though, because we're still changing up colors from here to there. Like when we started pools in October. Well, well, we yeah, had blue being used at pest and pest control was yeah. blue, and it was like, but pools should be blue. So I think we're on a good direction. A we're on a good direction. I do think Kobe and our team have, have thought through that a little more yeah. now. Now that we had to make that change, but that's that's one thing I do think we need. But but I agree with you. The yeah. color coding and imagine if we can integrate this into our future, and I think we will. It'll be a different. It'll it won't be the MVP, but our future technology, mm -hmm. our back end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think we'll be able to continue these. Be a nice user face yep. interface. That'll be user face. That'll be a user version face. three or four or five. The first version probably, yeah. will uh, look like will Windows nineteen ninety two. Yeah, probably something along. That's probably a good analogy. Yeah, <laughs> I It's going to be interactive. The first yeah. version. It'll be interactive and it'll be. Uh, it won't actually be technology from nineteen ninety two, but from a pre, from a yeah. pretty standpoint, yeah. it'll be that's pretty bland. Yeah. yeah. 
but I envision it looking and in, in growing into this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and beyond that too. Um, this part, the photography, which uh, <clears throat> lends itself into the um, videography as well, but um, the color of being bright, neutral, clean, that I'm excited to, to lean more into um, because I think in the past with the media... Isn't we... bright and neutral to like an oxymoron? No. Bright? The coloring. So bright does not distinguish the color. Okay. You can have bright colors, but you can change the brightness on any color. But if it's bright, can it be bright and neutral at the same time? Uh, I think that you're looking at what that looks like, what you're talking about. Neutral would be more like a tone. So mm. like that. I'm, that's a better way to put it. Yeah. Like neon green, that's neon green. And that's bright, I guess. Light yeah. green is like, like, so you can take the green hue and tone it down so it's not as... Okay. Thank you. In your yeah. face. That, 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 that makes sense. Not too high, not too heavy, not too light. Right. That's why you're in the role that you're in. I don't know what I'm talking about. You were kind of I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. At my point, though, that I was getting at is I think previously with any, like, graphic slides that we had, any anything like that, uh, any um, social media posts, I don't think it was very neutral. Um, I think it was leaning too heavily one way or the other, and it looked odd. It looked unprofessional is what it looked like. So I think we're in a good direction with... Um, as we create content, the look and feel of it, right. I think is going to be a lot more inviting and engaging as opposed to... Well, and the word I see over here under uh, the act, in action. I like yeah, that. Yeah, I love that. Action. Mm-hmm. I love that too. Um, yeah, the candid stuff. Like this with, with Kenny here, that, that being candid, um, I don't think it's bad, uh, but I do like when we actually have movement going yeah. on. Well, this is action too. He's he's in, in progress. In he's, you know... He's doing the job. He's doing the job, but he's posing for the, the shot. Right. My point is uh, being dynamic, like Nate in there. He's moving. He's doing something. He's mm-hmm. not being posed. Um, but I like that a lot. It's good stuff. We just need a content creator to do this at scale. We need someone to do a lot of this. Let's do it. We're getting there. We're getting there. And your skipping, signature... We're skipping over videography? Well, it's the same as the photography know, part, unless you want to watch just, this video. No, no, we're good. I just wanted to, uh, I was just kind of making a joke. Videography, you know, that's important. <laughs> oh, you don't say. <laughs> <laughs> and the signature, make it a great day. You know, make it a great day. We've been talking about this in terms of your personal branding of we need a tagline. We could probably spend something. What about Happy this. Day? I also I named my boat Happy Day. Granted, Happy Day got sold, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to. I have had about that one. Yeah, we don't want to talk too much about that. No, um, the fact that you sold something uh, titled you, Happy Day. Titled Happy Day. Why not? I could to- I could totally talk about that. What do you not want to talk about that? That was a good lesson. Let's talk about it. <laughs> well, the lesson is I named I bought a boat. I named it Happy Day. I put about 30 hours on the boat, and then I sold it. And the lesson is, is don't feel shame for showing an interest in something, spending a bunch of money, if you can afford it, spending a bunch of money, determining you don't have that much of an interest in it, and moving on to the next thing, as long as you can afford it. Mm -hmm. Sorry, that was it. <laughs> but I do have that is a hot spot in case you couldn't tell. <laughs> I'm surprised. I was expecting at least 15 minutes out of that that one. No, you're a smart ass. <laughs> Your branding though of Happy Day, where did that come from? I don't know. I just started saying you it. You just started saying it. No. Well, you were influenced by something. I, I mean, truly, I, I I've heard since I used it, and and have you? I have heard other people use it. Yeah. I don't. It's not, again nothing under the sun's original. It is mm. not original. Sure. Yeah. Um, although I'm also learning, you can trademark stuff, especially if you know how to work the system. You can trademark stuff that that isn't all that original. Yeah. Um, but no, I honestly I don't know where it came from. I just started saying it as I began. Uh, as I began getting on, having to get on camera, mm-hmm. for whether it was for our website stuff or for different things, it just kind of was something that started getting. It was easy for me to 
to say as an introduction. Mm-hmm. Happy day, this is EJ McCoy. Yeah. As opposed to how's it going or what's my pastor say? My pastor, every time he walks out on stage, he says, hello, everyone. I think that's literally, mm-hmm. hey, mm-hmm. everyone. That's what he says. Hi, everyone. Yeah. Uh, that's what I'm saying. I, like I, I think that we can spin off of happy day, um, in, or not spin off of it, but integrate it uh, more into your personal branding. Um, and I do like it, the term founders branding. Founders media. Founders media. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Founders media. I like that. Brandon came up with that. You came up with that, right? Founders media? No? Okay, maybe it was me. I thought it was you. We'll give him the credit. He's the new guy. That's what I'm that's what Brent, trying to do. <laughs> Brent, Brent got us got us credit. Yeah, good. Founders Media. Um, actually, now that I think, I think it was Kobe is the one who actually first said that. Um, but he fa- gets enough credit. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. The Founders Media. Um, it's something that you are interested in that you want to push into. You see the value immediately from it. Um, and now we just need to convince Josh to push into it. Yeah, I can do it. <laughs> There you go. That's how he convinces him. <laughs> that actually is exactly how he convinces him. That Josh, to, we don't want Josh to do such a thing. It's reverse psychology with him. Yeah. Well. Um, yeah. Look, and in, in, in all seriousness, uh, I love the term founders media, and the way to get Cahill doing it is to make get some successful. momentum. Yeah. Make it make it successful. Uh, he has a really high bar mm-hmm. for what he is going to deem. And again, it's all artistic, so it's also a bunch of opinions. But he has, uh, he's, he's particular about it, and, and he's, got, he's definitely got his opinions on it. He's definitely studied, studied it. But he wants us to be the guinea pigs. When you say he case. has a high bar, high bar for what? He has strong opinions as to what it's going to look like. As to what, not necessarily as to what, what we're going to do is going to look like. He has strong opinions... How do I, what am I trying to say? He has. Re- Let's put it this way: just like you and I are uh, uh, consumers of content, like we're in, in whatnot. He's very much so a consumer of this kind of content. Mm-hmm. He and I have talked about elements of doing this in media and being on camera ourselves and together and separate. We've talked about this for ten years. Mm-hmm. That's what I mean. And he has strong opinions about how he might would do it if it, he gotcha. was going to do it. Mm-hmm. He has also gone back and forth over the years, just as I have done, and you know. Is that why about, he hasn't shared what his expectations would be? Because he goes back and forth? Probably. Okay. Probably. Well, it's really annoying. I wish he would just share them so we can yeah. start somewhere. He's a... Uh, uh, annoying character in a lot of ways. <laughs> I didn't say that he was annoying. <laughs> no, said I his actions were annoying. Anyways. Um, but no, I think that uh, if we, you know, as we continue to, to push forward and, and gain momentum uh, in what we're doing, I don't even think it'll take much. You know, we're talking about 20,000 subscribers, 100,000 subscribers. I don't even think it'll take half that. Mm-hmm. Well, but this is a good starting sp- point. And I, um, I'll say... He does see the value. I've had specific conversations yeah. where he says, keep doing it. Do it. Invest the money in it. Mm-hmm. Um, invest the time in it. And then he jokingly says, and then whenever you are famous, I will come in and take all the glory. <laughs> and I joke and I say, perfect. I actually think that's exactly how it's going that's to exactly, go. It, that's exactly how I anticipate and hope mm-hmm. that it goes. So yeah. he'll be on here yeah. someday. But for now, Founders Media. Mm-hmm. Will be only one, one of founder. the two co-founders yeah. for now. Well, all of the things that we're pushing into over the next year, two, five, ten decades down the road, I think this these brand guidelines are a good um, bowling alley uh, guideline. It says I don't know where I was going with that one. <laughs> bowling alley guidelines. What are the, the bumpers? Bumpers. The bumpers that keep us on track. Is what oh, I was trying okay. to get. At. That's I, what the guidelines are. Yeah. They're like bumpers. Yeah, that, is that did how you not bowl? translate super well. No, it didn't, Do but it's it hilarious. To how is I that how you bowl, bowl with bumpers? No. You're a bumper bowler? I, I, I hit strikes. I, I, I can't don't even bowl. Hit, I don't even know what I... Is that I, the right I, way to say it? Hit I hit strikes? I don't think that's how you say it. I think that actually that fits, I think. I bowl strikes? I, mm. I don't know. Well, I think this is less productive than the boat conversation. <laughs> but it's taking up three minutes and not ten 
I think well, it was only like 30 seconds, but it is close enough. Either way, um, I think that we've gotten a really good direction of how we're going to pursue media uh, and, and marketing for that matter in 23 and then beyond that. The hope is to onboard a, a professional, uh, someone who's as hungry as we are, um, that sees the, the value in Shoreby and what we can offer our team members, what we can offer our customers, and what we can offer people who have no idea who we are. Um, and it's going to be um, head down to the grindstone to make that happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that they have, <clears throat> whoever that individual is, um, is going to, in my opinion, feel a lot of intrinsic value from accomplishing that. Um, and so that's what we were looking for. Um, but this is a good start. It's yeah, a great start. I agree completely. And yes, we're putting together an incredible uh, media and marketing team mm-hmm. led by yourself. I'm excited about 23 too. And anxious, yeah. I'll admit. Very anxious. Well, because uh, again, a lot of marketing is, yeah, I think a lot of wind. guessing. But if we have the right people, when I say the right people, of people who are cohesive with this team and people who are committed, yeah. um, I think that it's a good start and we'll learn a lot, even if it's not exactly what we intended to be. Yep. So, all right. Let's awesome. go. Make well, it happy a great day, day and make it a great day. <laughs> we said the same.